Okay, for this piece, we're going to work with our color concentrates, our small and mini sumi brushes, and this is what we're going to be doing. So what I've done, uh, go back to your stamping. You're going to stamp one side of the glass. Excuse me. And what I've done here is I did not fire this. I etched the glass and then I stamped it on the front or the etched side and now I've turned it over. I've laid it on a paper towel because I don't want it to sand off any of the product. And I'm going to be using uh, 150, 151, and 152 of the Ceruleans. And this will give us, uh, on this particular one that I did, I only um, did 151 and 152 cerulean and dark deep cerulean so i'm going to add the lighter color in there because i have more flowers okay so with your color concentrates you always need to shake vigorously uh, they are in a gel base remember and so therefore they need to be shook up really really well and then just put some out in a palette when you shake them, you'll, you'll hear them start to move around. Otherwise, they're too thick to use. And some of the darker colors tend to be even thicker. You may have to add like one brush load of water as you're working. Just keep that in mind. Okay. So we're going to just take the Sumi brush, and I'm going to use the small Sumi. And what I want you to do is... Have yourself a paper towel. Always wet your brush first and then blot it out to remove most of the moisture because you don't want water running all over your glass. But you do need to dampen the hairs of the brush just so that uh, they're conditioned and not completely dry. Okay, so let's start. I want the middle one and we'll do a couple of these and then I'll finish the project and come back and show you what it looks like. We're not going to take up time. Um, the other Thing that you need to be aware of is as you're working you don't want to get a bunch of fingerprints all over your glass so I like to just take a paper towel fold it in half that way I can rest my wrist there and you want to fully load the brush and when you fully load okay I'm going to bring this closer kind of just pull that brush and the color over to the side of the palette and really work the color into the hairs, okay? So that it's fully loaded. Don't just use the tip of the brush. You paid for all the bristles, you get to use all of them. That's one of my little pet peeves. Because uh, so many people tend to just load a little tiny bit on the tip and it depends on the technique, but for this, we want to make sure that we get good coverage. So I'm just going to press down and pull towards the center. And I want you to reload just a little bit each time. And the reason that you do that is so that you deposit the same color value on the piece. Because if you keep using with what's just in the brush, it's going to get less color and less color as you go. Turn your piece as you're working. Press, pull, and lift. And I'm lifting as I get towards the center of that flower. Sometimes you can get two strokes out of one load, but if you're just starting with these products and you're not familiar with them, then definitely load each time. Now I notice I've got a little spot here that looks like it's repelling. Make sure your glass is clean. It should be clean because you cleaned it before you uh, did the stamping, but sometimes if you've moved it around or waited, it might, or maybe you set your hand on it could have some oils. Keep turning, keep loading. Okay, so press, pull, and lift up. And we're not looking for a beautiful little brush stroke. Basically, we're just trying to cover the area that you're working in. And you always want to use the largest brush possible that you feel comfortable with because you'll have less strokes or less lines where you're doing each stroke with. Press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. Okay, so well, now what I want to do is I want to turn this over and show you what it's going to look like. Okay, so you can see you see the individual strokes. Okay, there's a close-up. 
So, and when you see those, that's good because then that'll add color variation as you're working and it gives more dimension. Okay, so then maybe I'm going to come out here and do one. Press, pull and lift. Now when this dries, I will come back on the front side of the glass and I'm going to add some additional strokes. Okay, so I've added these darker strokes and the little comma strokes in between. This flower and this flower were painted on top. You can see that you don't see the black lines like you do here. Okay, so that makes a huge difference. It depends on the look you want. And on this particular one, I don't know if you can see it. Um, these that are done on the front, they are like a matte finish versus the glossy like the glass. And that's because I did not sift any to clear over the top of this. If you want it all glossy, if you're going to use it as a food surface, or maybe uh, you're selling it, it's a gift, and you want it to all be the same, then just sift one light coat of your clear powdered frit over the top. And that way that area will be capped. I have come back and I've added uh, little pieces of coarse clear frit for like a dew drop type of a look. And that's optional. Okay, so let's go back to our piece. So I'm going to do some of these in uh, the Cerulean, the 151, and then I'm going to do some in the 150. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any, and I might do some in the 52. I'll have to just see. Always turn your piece as you're working. And once again, I like to pull my strokes towards me. I feel like you have more control. Okay, and make sure you still do them, even on these portion, uh, you know, partial petals, you still need to pull those in. If for some reason you've come too far to the middle, you know, you can always take another brush and push some of that off. I'm going to dampen and you can take and push some of that back if you choose to. If you don't want to, you don't have to, because we'll come back and put a little bit of yellow in that center. Okay, let's do one more. Press, pull and lift. Press, pull and lift. Constantly reloading, working that color into the bristles of the brush. The Sumi brush is made up of a black natural squirrel hair, it's called. So it's like the hair on your head. It's going to absorb whatever you put in it, whether it's water, whether it's color, and it's going to carry it further to do those strokes with. If you're using um, a Taclon brush like the 455 number zero, one, and whatever uh, size you might have, but if it's a Taclon, it has these yellow hairs or the golden type hairs. These are man-made, they have a waxy coating, and they tend not to hold the product. Uh, the product meaning it will just slip right off of it. So it's good for some things, but it's, uh, I like using the natural hair most of the time when I'm working with fired products. Okay, so just continue and finish uh, all those, and then we'll come back and I'll show okay. you what's next. So what I've done here is take some 123 sunflowers, still using my small sumi brush, load that brush up, and I've just dabbed some in the centers. I'm going to put some on the top also, but I did put some on the back, and what I'll do is flip this over and show you what it looks like. So you can see three different colors, 150, 151, and 152. And then I'll add some strokes on top and some yellow on the centers. Okay. Okay. What I've done now is I've flipped the piece over and I started on the light cerulean pieces, excuse me, flowers. And I'm using the mini sumi this time. And I'm just going to add a couple of small strokes on that large opening. So it's just an accent. Press, pull, and lift just like we were doing before. I'm using the same color that's on the back side. Just creating um, another layer of you the can color. Use the mini so that it. 
So either one would do the job. It's just because I was doing just one area, not trying to cover the whole petal, I chose a smaller brush this time. And it will also have less product in it, so it'll be a little more transparent. And I am doing two strokes with one brush load this time. Okay, so I've got all the light colored ones done. Now what I'm gonna do is on the cerulean ones, or the medium of the colors, the middle color, middle tone, I am going to go ahead and still use the mini sumi brush and like I've done on this one I'm going to come in and I'm going to accent on one side of that large opening. It could be in one of the individual areas along the side. It just depends on what stamp you're using, um, how you want to accent it. So I'm going to pick up some of the deep cerulean I'm going to start in the middle and work myself out. That way, hopefully, I will not set my finger down in it. That's my goal. And I'm going to use um, the Cerulean 151. So you could do any combination. And let's put it on the opposite side that we did those others. Okay. There again, constantly press, pull, and lift. Double check yourself. And you don't have to be a brush stroker or someone that does a lot of brush strokes to do this. This is just a basic press, pull, and lift. Hopefully this will add uh, some different things that you can do with your glass creations. The more you know, the more you can do. And I hope that you take this and to a different level than I have even. I'm just kind of covering some of the basics. Uh, I put the yellow in the centers in the background, you know, on the bottom layer. But I want to reinforce that by adding a little bit more on the front just so it doesn't get lost. And I just dab, just kind of pat it in. When I say pat, I don't mean um, a heavy application because the heavier you are, the drier, if you do not sift on top of this, the drier the color will be. It'll be a matte finish. Just dab it in there kind of randomly. Didn't have to be perfect. just to add a little bit more depth to it. Because if you get too heavy, you see that one's a little heavy. I'm going to come back. I'll show you something. Okay. Now, I said this one was a little heavy. I'm going to just come back after I've cleaned my brush and just kind of do the same motion over the top and that just kind of thins that out a little bit. Okay, now one of the other things that you can do, uh, you can take some of the black that we stamped with and you can take what's called a stylus or a dot maker some of you call it the ends have different size balls on the end we call it a stylus in this ceramic so I'm going to use the larger end and I've squeezed out some of my black here I'm going to mix that up a little bit just to loosen it so it's not so stiff and you can actually come in and add and I did not do this on my fired piece but I wanted to add a little more accent so place some dots. You can kind of follow the guide. So we hope that these, um, you know, working with the color concentrates gives you some other ideas in your glass designs. And feel free to, you know, post on the board if you have questions or... 
you know, can I do this? Can I do that? You know, if I haven't tried it, I will be honest with you. And there's so much that we can do with this technique. Um, I hope you take it and run with it. Okay, so now let's go to uh, the mini Sumi, and I'm going to pick up some of the dark color. Let's say you you don't want to, or you're afraid that you can't do these little strokes. You could just take the end of a paintbrush handle. Um, the Sumis are probably not good because they've got a pointed end, but let's say you're 455, see the end of that, where it's blunt. You can take that and create dots. So if I had this, I could create graduated dots, okay? If you want them all the same size, same as with your dot maker, you need to uh, load every time, okay? So if you didn't want to do this, you could just put a dot. So the larger the handle of the brush, the larger the dot is going to be. So you can see on this one, see the difference in the size. So you'd have larger dots, smaller dots, okay? So you don't have to do that stroke. Um, this is just something that I did. Okay, so I'm just going to press, pull, and lift. And it may not be everywhere. It's just where I wanted to fill in some space. You could come back and on the back side, you could flood in some color. And this is one that I put some green in the background. Just thin the color down a little bit more, the concentrates. Remember, we're only working with concentrates here. There is no enamels on this. 